hello and welcome back to another video today here again on Forza Horizon 5 for a bit of a guide to using the Event Lab tools. So recently after I uploaded a video taking a first look at the recent Event Lab update and another video on building my first street circuit with these new props, I was literally inundated with a comment asking how do you place these props. So today I'm going to go through how to use Event Lab, starting with choosing a start line, planning a route, placing checkpoints and props, all the way to some of the more complex features like the step rotation settings and camera settings and things like that. If this is your first time using Event Lab, I recommend you watch the first few steps to get you going with the tools until you're familiar with them before you start messing around with some of the settings I'm going to take a look at later in the video. If, however, you are more experienced with Event Lab, you might want to skip some of those basics, so feel free to skip a little way ahead if you know how to place props and things already um, to see some of the finer controls and some of my tips for using Event Lab, having used it for a year since the game's launch. Before you begin, it's best to have a route in mind already. If you don't, however, I recommend opening the map, changing the filters with the RB button, um, so you can untick them all with the top one there. And I recommend you tick road, dirt and cross country to see where the potential start lines for your event are. Um, basically, you can build a track starting from any pre-existing start line in the game. You can use street races as well, but the checkpoints on those are those red flares, which are a little bit more fiddly to place. So generally, I avoid using those. So simply start by choosing a start point. I'm going to be using the Horizon Mexico circuit for the purposes of today's video to build a simple figure of eight track. Now, some tracks you have to be aware don't actually start where that icon is. For example, the festival circuit starts along here, where I'm going to try and make a sort of figure of eight around using some of these little roads in here. Once you've made your way over to your start line of choice, enter event as you would with any other race or rivals, and then just scroll across to create route, select create route, and choose a car to build your route with. It doesn't matter which one you choose. You will then load in just ahead of the start finish line, which is denoted by that white line in the sky back there, and there'll also be a bit of blue racing line behind you. You must make sure that this is included in your route, so that bit of straight line behind me in this case, because that's where cars are going to spawn in on the grid, and if you don't include it, you have problems with missing a checkpoint each time you finish a lap. To begin with, I always start by placing checkpoints. At the moment, you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner below the minimap, um, you have a rewind and route options available, which we'll look at a bit later. But if you drive forward, you will then also get the option to place checkpoint once you've gone far enough. Usually if I'm building a route that's aimed at racing, which I usually am because I'm usually building them for my racing series, I tend to try and place checkpoints every time there is an apex. So to do a checkpoint place, you simply press the start button, which is the one with the two squares, and then you can place your checkpoint, you can move it left and right using the left analog stick and widen and narrow it using the left and right triggers. I'm going to make this first one nice and wide in case anybody's running wide into the first corner. And then when you're happy with where your checkpoint is, you press A to confirm and then you can continue on your route to go and place your next checkpoint. So if we head on round the corner to about here, we can then place checkpoint, similar sort of thing, make it the right width and place of where you want it. You'll kind of get more familiar with what feels right as you do this, and A to confirm. If at any point you're unhappy with a checkpoint, you can just rewind, and if you rewind past the checkpoint and continue, the checkpoint will then have deleted and you can place it again, like that. So generally, once I've placed two or three checkpoints, I like to then place some tire bundles outside of them, because when you come back to place more props or edit your route later, you can only see two or three checkpoints at a time, so it's handy to have a prop outside of them to remember where they are. This can be deleted later, 
But as this is the first prop we're going to place, I'm going to show you how to do that. So you go on root options by pressing the menu button with the three horizontal lines on it, where you'll get these options. Place finish line, which you can place at any point if you want to make a sprint. I'm making a circuit, so that's irrelevant for today. You can go on view map to see how your route is progressing and sort of plan which roads you might want to use. You can go into blueprint builder, which is where all of the objects are that I'll show you in a minute. You can delete all the objects if you're not happy with where they all are or redraw route, which removes all of the checkpoints but keeps all of the objects which you can do at any point so to place a prop you go into the blueprint builder where you'll then need to press the menu button again to open up the library of props we'll get into the more options later on because you don't need to worry about those for the moment and when you open this you'll be greeted with a whole load of props in different tabs if you don't have the hot wheels expansion you won't have this one um, but you should still have horizon history ramps and platforms, signs and flags, festival, walls and fences, gameplay, vehicles, industrial, urban, rural, natural, and decoration. You can tab between these by using the left and right bumper buttons on the back of your controller, and then scroll along them by using the left analog stick. Some of them will have a plus and a number on them, which means they are not a prop, they are a selection of props. For example, these are all of the Horizon 1 props. So to open up the 15 props that are hidden behind here, you select object and then you are greeted with all 15 Horizon 1 themed objects. It's the same for Horizon 2 and some of the Hot Wheels tabs. So to get the tire bundle that I want, I need to go to Walls and Fences. I want the destructible black tires. Destructible objects are denoted by the pink smashable icon in the bottom corner. The ones without it are indestructible and solid. So, these are the tyres I want. So you press A to select them and then you move them about with a combination of the two analogue sticks and the left and right triggers. If you're new to Event Lab, you're best, of, best off just sort of playing about with these until you get used to how it works, basically. You'll get more and more familiar with it as you go. Once you're happy with where your prop is, you simply press A to choose where to put it. You'll notice if you pick a prop straight out of the menu, like I did with that one, it won't go through the floor, which is quite handy. If you're not happy with where it is, you can press A to edit object. However, now it will go through the floor, which is a little bit annoying. If you want to put it back where it was, simply press B to back out of this menu. And if you're really unhappy with it, you can delete it entirely, which means we now need to open the menu to place another one. You can also clone objects by pressing Y, um, but as with editing where an object is, it will now go through the floor. So generally, if I want another of the same object, I open up the library again, and it will still be on the prop you previously used, so it can be quite quick to just place lots of the same prop, which is quite useful. So I'm going to continue placing these either side of each of the checkpoints we have so far and then we'll continue building our route. And this one I won't place tyres either side of because I've already got the barriers so I know not to place any props right up against the barrier. That's basically why I do this so that props don't go under the checkpoint or they end up hovering weirdly. So this is just to remind me where they are, they will be deleted later. So once you've finished placing those or any props you have placed and you want to continue placing your checkpoints, you simply exit Blueprint Builder by pressing B and then say yes, you would like to continue building your route. So I'm going to place the rest of the checkpoints and then we'll start looking at some of the finer tools and things you can change to place props more carefully. Once you've placed your final checkpoint, which I have here, make sure you don't then cross the start finish line or Forza will think you've completed your route and throw you out of it. If however you do, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to demonstrate here. If you drive across, it'll think you've finished your route and suggest you save it as a new file. So if you want to save it, you simply go on create new and give it a name of your choice. So I'm going to call this Jeff.
Once you've done that, if you want to get back to editing with it, go on Edit Root and it will take you back to your start finish line. And it will show you start line with previous and next below it with left and right on the D-pad. So this is to select which checkpoint you're at. So if you go left to previous checkpoint, it will take you to checkpoint six out of six in this case. And I'm going to go on create new route from here, which means all checkpoints after this one will be deleted. But this is the last one. So it will keep all of my checkpoints and put me back in here at which point I can open up the menu and go on Blueprint Builder again. So now that we have all of our checkpoints and you guys know how to place props, we're going to open up the Blueprint Builder again to look at some of the finer controls for Event Lab. So to start with, I'm just going to place a wall and fence, which is this one, which is the bit I most commonly use probably. So let's not worry too much about where this is at the moment. This is just as an example. So let's place it here and then you have a nice wall. So if you clone object and just use the left analog stick, you can make it line up quite nicely, um, but it is a bit fiddly lining things up. It might take a few times because it sometimes jumps back and forth a little bit. So that is that. So I think now that we know how to place those, let's take a look at some of the other options, starting with the step rotation. So if you want to use step rotation, you need to toggle it on first and its default will be at 15 degrees. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. So if we were to clone this object and we want it to rotate, you press on the D-pad left or right and it will rotate 15 degrees because that's what's set in the settings. However, if you go into here and then toggle that anywhere you want from between 1 to 90. We'll put it at 90 just as an example here. If you then take an object and use left and right on the d-pad, it will swivel 90 degrees. So this is a really useful tool that I didn't actually discover until quite recently, um, but it does help a lot. Another thing I can show you which only really applies to Hot Wheels and a few other things is the snappable objects. So if we take a bit of Hot Wheels track and place it here, this isn't going to stay here, this is just an example. If we then go into more options where the attachment nodes are, you can see they are on, which means we can see these yellow node things and it means if we get another object it should clip together with it. So if we turn that off and then do the same thing. You'll see the nodes aren't there and the objects aren't snapping. So that will work for very few objects that have snappability. Um, it's just Hot Wheels track and a few pipes and things at the moment. The other options are all to do with the camera. So we have free cam and orbit cam. So at the moment I'm using free cam, which is very much like this. And to be honest, I never actually use the other one. Um, but orbit cam looks like this. Um, which, yeah, I don't actually use, but you can kind of see you're better off playing about with them, actually, because they kind of feel a bit different to operate. So it's whichever one you find more comfortable, really. I'm used to FreeCam because that's the one that was there since launch, so that's the one I use. And the only other option is the camera speed, which is set to medium at the moment. However, if you want to speed it up, you can put it on fast, which looks a bit like this and is mad and chaotic but this might actually be useful i've always just left it on medium but this is really useful for being able to fly very quickly i might leave it on that actually i wouldn't recommend doing that if you're just getting used to the tools it's a bit um manic but so i have put my camera back on medium speed because i couldn't quite cope with it being that fast um but i am going to move this or take this wall out because i think it might cross over the racing line which i was saying you need to keep this bit nice and straight so the checkpoints don't mess up. So I'm going to take that one out. Before we continue building, I am going to quickly show you how to exit and save if you want to come back and build your route later if you've run out of time for your building session. So if we carry on building route, you basically just cross the finish line whenever you're ready, as I showed you earlier. Um, and then you can either save your route as a new file, 
or you can save over your file, which is what I do, because otherwise there's going to be millions and millions of tracks named similar things in here, which is going to be a mess. And if you simply want to quit to get to your route later, just press quit. We won't worry about creating an event until the route is finished. This will land you back out in free roam to continue doing whatever else you might want to do on Forza or to quit your game. When you're ready to resume building your route, head over to the start line you used, enter event, only this time go on solo, not create route, go on create blueprint, select anything you like here, it doesn't matter, I tend to just go anything goes and open because it's simpler basically, but it really doesn't matter. Go on create, choose route, and then just scroll across to the track you want to use and press X to edit the saved route at which point you'll be prompted to choose a car, and as when you first started making it, it doesn't matter which one you choose. You'll then load in at the start-finish line, as you might have done earlier if you accidentally completed the route, at which point you can go on left on the D-pad to go to the previous checkpoint, where you can then go on create new route from here, select yes, because it's not actually going to delete anything of its last checkpoint, and continue placing your props as you were before. As you are building, you do need to be aware of the prop limit, which is in the top right hand corner as a percentage just under objects. It will be slightly lower for you guys, um, the limit, if you're playing on Xbox. This is on PC, so there's quite a high limit. The limit is a bit broken at the moment though, so it's worth you saving and quitting out of the route as I showed you earlier, and then reloading it up to get it to reset sometimes, because sometimes it's inaccurate despite Forza saying they've fixed it several times. Once you're happy that you've placed all of the props you want to and you're ready to share your route, exit Blueprint Builder again and complete the race by driving over the finish line, uh, at which point you'll be able to share it. So again, I'd recommend just saving over the file you already have. Once you're happy, you're ready to share your blueprint. Um, you will need to turn your route into a blueprint, so you need to go on create event with this route. So that will bring up this menu where you can edit the name of the blueprint. So I've set it to the same thing as the track because that's what people will see when it's shared. But you can put whatever you like in there and whatever you like in the description. Um, but yeah, you can just click on these and type whatever you like. If you're on Xbox, it will bring a keyboard up on your screen, which you can do with a controller. If you're on PC, you can just type in with your keyboard. And in event settings, at the moment, I've set it to one lap and turned driver tiles off just for simplicity. Um, but do set it as one to begin with. I'll show you this in a minute because you can dial it up to some more laps later on. It just means you only have to run one lap to get the blueprint shared. Um, rather than running however many other you might put in. That's just what I'd recommend doing. Um, season can be whatever you like. I always set it to early afternoon and clear, but that doesn't really matter. And fixed time progression, um, just because otherwise the weather goes a bit funny if we're using it for racing. But set all of those to whatever you like, but do make sure number of laps is on one, is one of my tips. I've turned the music off because YouTube and left it at anything goes. Personally, I don't mess with the rules of play because I don't really know what I'm doing. Some people have made some quite good rule sets which you can copy or import, but for now, let's not worry about that. And yeah, you can't share it yet. You must first test drive, which is why I've set it to one lap because it means we only have to run one lap. Again, doesn't matter which car you use for this. So it basically makes you run one lap just to make sure that the route works and there's not any part of it that you can't pass, for example. 
or that cars won't manage. So if you set something with a big jump to D class only and a car won't make it, it won't let you share it, for example. So we basically just need to run one lap of our blueprint, which can give us some idea of how it runs as well and whether any props are in the way or need moving or whether we need to change checkpoint placement slightly, which is something you can come back in and edit as I showed you earlier. So it is quite a short little route. But hopefully this gives you an idea of what it's like because this will be shared um, for you to give a go if you'd like to. And round the final corner, lap complete. So it should now let us change it, although the finish is along here, which I hadn't quite anticipated. So if we then return to event settings, it will bring us back to here where you can now see we can publish. So instead of doing that, I'm going to go into event settings where you see we set it to one lap where I can then set it to whatever I like. So because it's quite a short route, I'm going to set it to five. Press confirm and it still lets us share it. So let's publish that like that and save over that because that's not important. So if you go back to whichever start line you used, your event will then show up under event lab creations in your local events, but also in your shared events. Now, I, I recommend using it in your shared events, for example, if you're in a convoy, because sometimes if you load things up from local events, the props don't show up for everybody. Also, if you look at it in shared events, if we go and find Jeff, wherever he's gone, sometimes things don't show up, in which case you have to go into search and put the name of your track in the title which is rather irritating when you're looking for your own track. But anyway, confirm and then it's there. And then if we press down on the right analog stick, it'll give you a bit more information where you can press RT to reveal the share code. So if you want to give this one a go, that is its share code. And that is going to bring an end to today's video. Hopefully that was useful if you haven't used Event Lab before um, to go to the very basics of how to pr place props and checkpoints and things. And also to some of you who are more familiar with it, hopefully some of the more advanced options um, were useful for you to take a look at today. Um, for now, though, that is going to be all. So thank you very much for watching and I'll be back with the next video very soon. Mm -hmm.